Hey everyone, Pow Wow Guy, Rob Phoenix here, and welcome to my newest show, The Weekly Pow Wow Update. And during this show, once a week, I'll be taking you through the next seven days of the week. Uh, we'll be talking astrology, we'll be talking weather, we'll be talking powwow charms and healing, and the moon and the signs, and gardening tips, and home remedies, and all sorts of things to get you through the next seven days of your life in the context of Pennsylvania Dutch powwow. So hit the like and subscribe button, hit the notification button so you get updated the next time the newest video posts. And as always, you can find me on my website, pagermanpowwow.com. Now let's get to the update. Hey friends, welcome to the Powwow Weekly Update for the week of Sunday, February 5th through Saturday, February 11th. Uh, last week was cool, right? Uh, Groundhog Day. You know, no matter what Phil says, you know, the the seasons will pass as they will pass. Uh but spring is coming, um, you know, and I, let's not get crazy, but uh, this week begins, Sunday begins with a full moon in the sign of Leo. Uh, that means there's a lot highlighted, but for our purposes, for powwow purposes, we are focused on um, our health and our home. Uh this Leo full moon is a great time for us to not just protect our homes, but also our bodies. Uh, so we can start taking preventative measures. Um, Leo rules the heart and the spine. Um, but as the week progresses, the moon then moves into the sign of Virgo, which is like uh, intestines and bowels. And then Libra is our kidneys. And then finally, our, our week ends with the moon in the sign of Scorpio, which is like our, our sex organs, our bladder, that sort of thing. So we really have like that, the whole body part of our body um, highlighted this coming week. So I think, I think this week we should focus on protecting our body, um, taking preventative measures, things we can do maybe every day uh, to kind of um, keep our health on the up and up. Now, one of the things that I do, and now my son's hooked on it, everybody's hooked on it. It's not something I came up with, believe me, is, and it all happened because I went and got a new phone a couple of months ago, and with the new phone, they gave me a free, um, you know, whatever this is called, I don't know, an iWatch or something. Uh, it's fine, it tells the time, and you could change the appearance of it and such, but what it has on it is it tracks how many steps you take throughout the day, and it, it helps you set goals and such. Um, so my son and I became painfully aware that we weren't really w walking as much as we should be. So I know everybody does it and they talk about the steps and such, but, um, one thing like this really can make a positive impact on your health, uh, especially heart health, um, but also digestive health as well. So, uh, if I had any advice to give for this upcoming week, uh, we're not going to get too much detail of the different signs because we've already covered these in previous uh, videos. But this week I do want to talk about preventative things, things we can do to protect ourselves now to prevent something in the future, issues and problems and such with. So we'll be talking about what Pow Hours do, what the Pennsylvania Dutch does as a culture. Also, I have a good uh, a daily um, infusion that you can drink um, coming up. Um, but yeah, I'm, I want to promote this time. I want, I want to talk about taking your steps, get some steps in, set a goal of like a realistic goal. Um, like I work in an office, so a lot of my day is spent sitting down. Now I set kind of a high goal for myself of like 9,000 steps. Um, and it's nice because the watch every once in a while reminds you like, Hey, get up and move. <laughs> uh, so something like that is a nice reminder to kind of stay active, get, get your heart beating, you know, um, pumping the blood through your system, you know, get your body moving. It helps burn calories. It also tells you how many calories you burned. I'm not trying to tell you to go buy one of these watches, um, because I didn't buy mine. It came free with my phone, which is kind of cool. Um, but your phone can do that as well. As long as you have your phone in your pocket, it will count your steps. Um, so for whatever reason, if I don't have this on, like it's charging, as long as my phone is in my pocket, it still counts all the steps and how many calories are burned off. So I think that's really important to have some sort of health tracker. Um, it kind of keeps you motivated. It kind of, you know, I feel, you know, Josani and I have this little competition going, you know, the 
couple of days ago we were sitting and he said, how many steps do you have? And I said, I don't know, like 7,000, um, how many do you have? He's like 4,000. And we were just sitting there all of a sudden we both jumped up and started going around the tables and such, you know, just trying to like outdo each other with steps. But there you go. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what's going on with the moon this coming week. We're going to talk about preventative things, things, ways to protect our home, protect our, our health to prevent issues in the future. So let's get to it. So this week, um, in addition to talking about ways to protect our health, the powwow stuff I want to talk to you about is ways in which the Pennsylvania Dutch, not just powwowers, but the Pennsylvania Dutch as a whole, as a community, um, uh, would and still do uh, protect their homes. It's important for us to protect our houses, our properties, you know, our animals, our our land. If you have a barn, you want to protect that. Um, and so these are like their old timey methods that are still used in this modern day and age to uh, uh, um, give a sense of protection in the home, call down the blessings of God to both protect and bless your home and property. The first thing I want to talk about are horseshoes. Um, some believe the horseshoe uh, is kind of like the, uh, the, uh, the equivalent to um, you know, in the Bible where they, they put the blood over the doorway, you know, in this shape, uh, to protect against the angel of death. And so a horseshoe is believed to protect your home, uh, but also bless it with good luck. Um, now this horseshoe I have, this, this particular one still has the old horseshoe nails in it. Um, and that adds an extra bit of luck and protection to it. So these would be hung up. There's some dispute, like, I was always taught they should be hung this way because if it's this way, then the luck runs out, you know, um, and also this way because it's like a cup to receive, you know, blessings from God. Um, but that's your, you know, it's whatever you think. So a horseshoe is one way of protecting your house and bringing good luck and good fortune into your home. Um, and then another way that's e even more recognizably Pennsylvania Dutch would be something like um, a letter of protection or a letter from heaven, a heaven's letter, a Himmel's brief. Uh, this is one I made a long time ago. Um, you know, I just drew some pictures like the angels and such. And here's a blessing asking for God to protect my home, my family from all sorts of stuff. Um, these are very common, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch, they are very well aware of these. Um, <clears throat> here's one, this one, I made this like 20 years ago when I was first learning things on my old school computer. Um, but I've been carting it around in this like cheap plastic frame forever. Uh, the Sator Square, the Sator Square is believed to be the, um, the words, the, the word pater noster, meaning our father, uh, scrambled up and put into this sort of word puzzle. Um, you know, uh, uh, origins of it are disputed. Um, however, it's been known for centuries as a magical means of protection. And you'll find it in Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, you'll find it used in Pennsylvania Dutch artwork and such. Um, and also in powwow uh, grimoires. So the Sator Square. Yeah, this was me back in the beginning days. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had this, this has been through like four homes <laughs> with me and it's just, it's just always been around. It's just it reminds me of the beginning days. So anyway, that's another protective thing. And then the last thing I want to show you is this is an actual Himmel's brief from the 1800s. Not sure of the exact year. Um, it's, written in German, it's all in German, but it's a house blessing. It's to bring uh, the blessings of God on your home, but also blessings on your family, protect you from evil, um, bring you bounty. You see like prosperity, you see all this food. And uh, this is old school, like Pennsylvania, Dutch, uh, or German, you know, whatever, um, artwork. And these are very common. You can see this one at one time was folded you know, you can see some wear and tear where it would have been folded, probably kept in the family Bible. Um, 
Some may even have been carried with them. Uh, but these more elaborate ones, really more were like tucked away in family Bibles um, or like this one frame. This is an old frame. Um, I purchased it like this in this frame. So I'm not sure the year, uh, but this would be very common in Pennsylvania Dutch homes um, in the past and nowadays. So there you have it. That is Pennsylvania Dutch methods of bringing protection and house blessings um, blessings of God and the Holy Trinity upon your household, your family, your property, your animals, everything. Um, and there you go. Easy peasy. It's, uh, it's kind of the stuff that our culture is known for. Um, nothing weird or spooky about it. You know, just, just part of our culture, part of our tradition, and it's part of powwow. So let's see what's next. This week's uh, herbal remedy is, again, a, a more of a, a preventative measure, a way to protect your body, your immune system, your digestive health and such. Uh, so this is an herbal infusion. Um, some people would call it a tea. You can call it that if you want. Um, the technical word is infusion. So what you're going to need is dandelion root. Now dandelion root gives you vitamins A, B, C, it gives you zinc, potassium, it helps your digestion, it keeps your blood pressure down, it helps your liver function. So you're gonna take some of that. Um, now you can you can use the disposable tea bags like I usually do, or you can use one of these. Um, like you put it all in here and it has all like millions of little holes and you can just put it in the water that way and make it. Um, that's what I'm gonna do this time. Let me turn my water off, it's boiling. So we're gonna put some dandelion root in there. Spearmint. Spearmint is awesome for digestion and it gives your tea a lot of flavor. Um, some products like this is a, I ordered this from a Chinese company. Their products are amazing. They, they still have a lot of the sticks and stems in there, uh, but that's okay. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have any of that in your tea. So you want to put a couple pinches of that in here. Uh, the spearmint does give it a tea, tea or infusion of really nice flavor. Um, so you have your dandelion root, your spearmint, and finally the echinacea. Um, forgive this huge package of echinacea. I I meant to order like, I forget what it was. I meant to order like five ounces and I ordered five pounds. I don't know. But echinacea is the immunity booster, especially for people who get frequent colds and such. Like I get bronchitis a lot um, since the COVID days. So we're going to put that in there. You just put the cap on. Okay, so you have your organic dandelion, well, dandelion root, spearmint, echinacea. Then all you do, well, for this, you got to put the water in first. Nice hot water. Set that in there. Um, or if you use the disposable tea bags, which are super cheap, uh, you'll put that in first and then pour the water over it. Um, and you're just going to let that steep. You can cover this if you want with a saucer, which I kind of recommend. It keeps all that. It's, the essential oils will escape in the steam. So you kind of want to keep that in the cup. So if you want to just put a little saucer over it or whatever, not that necessary. Um, but there you go. This is an immunity booster. It's a digestive health uh, assistant. It gives you all the basic vitamins you need, potassium, zinc. It's, it's good for your liver. Uh, it's good for your blood. Um, this is like super tea. And you drink one cup of this a day, and that's really going to help protect you from all the, what they call free radicals and all the bad stuff that's floating around out there. So take care of your health, protect your health. Um, if you're in South Central Pennsylvania, oh, apologize for the background noise. There's a tree service outside cutting down some dead stuff. Um, but if you're in the South Central Pennsylvania area, um, the next seven days weather-wise, it's going to be pretty mild um, still. We've been in sort of like mild weather the uh, past couple days. Um, so it will stay in the upper 40s to low 50s pretty much all week from Sunday to Saturday. Now, it's going to be kind of a cloudy week. Um, we're going to see a lot less sun, a lot more clouds, not much precipitation until the end of the week. When, you know, Thursday, Friday into Saturday, we will... We'll probably see some rain. We could even see a little bit of snow, um, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so 
outdoor stuff. Um, you know, there's no reason why you can't be outdoors working most of the week, uh, <clears throat> you know, in preparation for planting season um, and such with. Uh, the um, Because the groundhog, you know, Phil gave us six more weeks of winter. Um, here in my area, we're just kind of now moving into winter. So I think the, uh, the farmer's almanac will have it right this year. But, uh, sorry about the dog barking. It's kind of crazy here this morning, but this is the only time I have to do this. So, um, yeah, the farmer's almanac is pretty much spot on for the weather. Um, it looks like winter will probably start being wintry here, probably in mid-February. So we'll see. Um, but that's the weather for the next seven days. So this week, I want to give a shout out to uh, a book, Powwowing in Pennsylvania, Brock Ryan, The Ritual of Everyday Life, written by Patrick Dunmoyer in 2017. Um, there is no better academic authority on powwow than Patrick Dunmoyer. Uh, Patrick's book is the most comprehensive book on Pennsylvania Dutch powwowing ever. Nobody's going to do better than this book. Now, the only thing that I would say is missing from this book, but that was not his intention for this book, is how to actually do power, but that's what I'm for. You know, that's what I'm here for, to teach you all that. But he teaches you the, 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 the proper Christian history and the Christian practice of Pennsylvania Dutch powwow. Um, you know, he speaks out against all the, the nonsense and the whatever, but... There is no better book than this one for Pennsylvania Dutch powwowing. So I urge you to pick this up. Uh, powwowing in Pennsylvania, Brock Rye and the Ritual of Everyday Life, written by Patrick Dunmoyer, 2017. That's when he wrote it. Um, you can go online and search it. Uh, it's it's published through Kutztown University, so um, availability might be strange. You'll probably have to order it online, but it's well worth it. I promise you. Um, so there you go. That is my shout out for this week. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the weekly update. Please like and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, uh, click the notifications to get notified next time I post a video. And God bless you all, love you, and we'll see you next week.